Welcome back to another Python Cities. So um, today we are going to be covering a new library that I released. It's not a super complicated one, but for those of you who are more interested in economic data from the United States Bureau of Economic Analysis, they actually have an API where if you would like to go and get economic data, you can do that using that API. Now, when I initially explored it, they seemed to have a library for R, but they didn't have a library for anything else, at least from what I could tell. <laughs> so what I did is I wrote a simple little API client library uh, for Python. So now if you wanna use the API using Python, then you can just use the library that I built. So. First and foremost, we're gonna look at the website just so that way you can understand kind of what type of data is there. Then what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you the GitHub repo where I stored this library. And then from there, we're gonna start going through and running through the examples. Now, there's not a ton of endpoints with this. However, most of those endpoints, you can do a wide range of combination of arguments. So. I'm not gonna be able to go through all of them, but I am gonna show you how you would make certain requests using the different endpoints. And we're gonna follow the ones that they have in the documentation just to kind of keep it consistent. And then I'm gonna show you some resources as well that you can use to help build your request. So first and foremost, let's go to the website. And I already have that open. Well, that's the one I don't care about. Here we go. So if you type in Bureau of Economic Analysis, then you will hopefully be redirected to this particular website from Google. And then from here, uh, this is the main page. And so the Bureau of Economic Analysis does make a bunch of economic data available for free. So this is a resource you can go to a government agency that you can go to to get economic data. So this is obviously very valuable depending on which type of industry you're working in. In fact, pretty much any industry, it's important if you're just trying to understand macroeconomic trends over time, or if you're trying to look even at uh, what is the international economic data, they do actually have some international data as well. So it's a great resource. It's, I call it the good resource only because it's free, right? So anything that's free, is great and so the United States government has a lot of free data. A lot of times it's just getting it and cleaning it or just navigating the mess of documentation that's usually around it. So this one was actually pretty straightforward. I do have some more projects that I'm working on that over time I'll start releasing, but this was like kind of the, the low hanging fruit that was easy to get through. So once you're on the main page, there's a couple different places you can go. So there's an interactive data page. So this is where you can actually go and uh, get data in more of like a interactive environment. So I, I personally don't use this one. Uh, they have an API. So this is where if you want to get uh, the data in a programmatic fashion, then this is where you can go as well. So this is what we're going to be covering. And then they also have some other stuff in here as well. So they have GDP. They have lots and lots and lots of data. So it's pretty easy to, uh, to get lost. But once you kind of start going through it, you, you know, you'll start kind of getting a little bit more familiar with it. It's easy to get, you know, tabular versus maps and stuff like that. So lots of great good stuff as well. And then if you go here at the main menu, you can also look at things by certain, you know, by topic, by place and things like that. So for example, I want GDP by industry, right? Well, there's lots of data here, as you can imagine. And then you can download some of this data as well. So they try to make it easy for you to go and uh, get it if you need it. And then also resources as well, just because, um, you know, there are a lot of times this information, you know, it's it's by industry, it's by count, you know, it's by region level. So it's, it's really easy to kind of get lost as I put it. So now that we kind of understand what type of data is here, so more, mostly GDP data, fixed asset data, input output, um, investment data sometimes, and even, you know, kind of important stuff like personal income. So imagine for a second, you want to go and use the API, right? Well, first thing you got to do is you have to register and get an API key. They make it super easy. 
So if you go to the API page, you'll notice over here, they have a register section, right? And so all you need to do is provide your, uh, your name, and then also your email and then fill out the CAPTCHA and then agree to the terms and service. You register, they will send you an email with an API key. And all you need to do is store that API key. And once you store it, you can then start um, you know, using the API. So really super, really easy to use this API. You don't have to go through a ton of steps. We've seen in previous examples, you know, some APIs, you gotta go do this, you gotta go do that. Uh, with this one, you literally just give them an email and they're going to give you an API key. So super easy to sign up. And then they also give you an overview about what data is available. So for example, one is you can get underlying GDP by industry. So these are detailed estimates of value added, gross output, and intermediate inputs by industry. Uh, input output, they have regional data. Uh, I think this one, you gotta be a little bit careful because they keep mentioning that it's depreciated, um, but then some aspects of it, you you get it differently from what it sounded like. So you get it through the actual like endpoints, you would specify regional stuff. Um, fixed assets, uh, international transactions, international service trade, uh, IIP, international investment position, GDP by industry, and then multinational enterprises. So lots of good data here. So assuming that, you know, you're comfortable, you say, Hey, this is great. I've got the data that I need next. You want to go and install the library I built. So if you want to go to the GitHub page, it is there for you. So for example, if I go here and then pow, 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 pow. where is it? Oh, uh, uh, as you can see, I have a ton, <laughs> a ton of repositories. This one is called the Python Bureau Economic Analysis API Client. It's a very long name. I should have shortened it, but it's too late now. Um, and then from here, this is structured very similar to a lot of my other repositories. So you'll see the readme here. Um, I actually just recently uploaded it to PyPy. So I'm going to be showing you how to install it that way. However, if you do want, you can always clone this repository. And if you would like to do a local setup using the setup.py file, you would just run pip install hyphen E and period. And then it's going to take this particular library and, um, do it that way. So there is that option. I give you some usage, uh, examples and then some output stuff as well. Additionally, I know a lot of people, they want to see what type of data is available. So if you go into the samples folder, you will see a list of responses. So these are all the different endpoints you can hit. And in each side of these, I'm oh, sorry, inside of each one of these, you will see if it loads, because some of these are very large, just an FYI. So you will see all the data that comes back. And then the nice thing about this particular endpoint is they will show you the parameters that you passed through. So you will say, okay, look, Alex made this request and it was for 2010, 2011, 2012, 2013 for this table ID, input, output. So lots of good information to, if you need to recreate your particular request, you'll have a result section and then you'll have the actual data itself. So very, very useful and super clean for you to use. So I would highly recommend you look through some of these examples and see what type of information is available to you. So now that we've done that, let's jump to Visual Studio Code and start writing some code. Woo. Okay, so if you haven't already, then what you're gonna wanna do is create a new Python file. So I'm just gonna call mine tutorial.py. And in this particular example, um, I'm going to assume that you do not have the library installed. So I'm going to open up my terminal doing control J. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do pip install. And then it's Python BAE. I think that's what I call it, right? Python BAE, BEA, BEA, sorry. Um, so pip install Python BEA. Now you can see here, it's already been installed on my system. So it's going to say it's already satisfied, but this should install everything you need in order to use this particular library. And once you've done this, you can actually start now writing the code to use the client. So I'm going to show you just, 
you know, very basic endpoints, nothing super fancy. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to input import some stuff that we need in order to run the code. The first one is pretty print. So we're going to be printing out a lot of data, obviously. So I want to make sure it's easy for everyone to read. So I'm going to use pretty print to do that. Additionally, I do have some information that is in a config file, a config.ini file to be more specific. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to import the config parser object, and then this will allow me to read that config file to go and get my API key. So this is more just for me. Again, something like an API key, you do want to make sure that you keep that private, ideally. If it does get compromised, that's fine. You just want to make sure you replace it. So I've seen sometimes people when they're <laughs> commenting on my GitHub, I've had a few people, they they posted their API key. Please do not post it on the GitHub because other people can see it. So just be a little bit cognizant of that. Trust me, I've done that before too. So don't feel bad that you've done it. I'm just saying, you know, keep that in mind when you're posting stuff. And then from here, we're going to actually import stuff from the actual library as well. So the first thing is I'm going to say from pi bea dot client import. And then of course I chose a very long name for the client, but I wanted to make it a little bit intuitive and it's the burial economic analysis client. And so then from here, I'm going to grab my API key. This is pretty straightforward. I'm gonna create a new variable, call it config. That's gonna equal a new instance of my config parser object. That config parser object has a read method and what it takes is the file path, right? So they call it file name, but it's really the path to the file. And that is located in my configs folder. And inside that configs folder, there is a file called config.ini. And then once I'm read that file, I am going to create a new variable called API key. I'm going to take my config parser object and I'm going to call the get method. And so the API key is in a section. It isn't called Alex credentials. And then from there, it is called API key. And so I'm going to go into my config file. I'm going to go into the Alex credentials section. And inside of there, there is a variable called API key. And that is assigned to my actual API key. So now that I have my API key, I am going to create a new instance of my client. So initialize my API client. And so I am going to call this BEA client equals and then we're going to go through this guy and it takes one argument API key and that equals the API key that I just read from my config file. Now that I've done that, let's go through and tap our first endpoint. One endpoint that we have access to is called the data set list. The data set list returns basically a list of all the data sets that we have available. Now, for those of you who would like to read a little bit more of an in-depth documentation, if you go into the resources folder, you will notice there is a PDF file. And this is the official documentation that is available to individuals who would like to use it. And if you go into it, you will see a bunch of stuff. A lot of it is more technical. So for those of you who are curious about how to build your request and what type of request you can make in the format it comes back, there is some information on that. So everything you pull from my library will always be JSON, but do be aware there is technically an XML version of it, but my library will not offer XML. Um, I try to keep it JSON just to keep it simple. And then if you keep basically going down, you're gonna start seeing a list of stuff. I'm gonna go into Adobe just to make my life easier. It's kind of around the appendix area. You'll start seeing different topics. So you'll see um, national income and product accounts, um, underlying detail, uh, you'll see fixed assets. So these are really what I would call the endpoints. They'll talk about the different arguments that need to be passed through, a description of those arguments and whether they are required or not. not. Now, also, some arguments have an all value. And what that all value means is if you don't want to specify, say, 10 different table names, you can just specify all, and it will return the data for all tables. Now, fixed asset is not a good example because there is no all value. However, if you look at the year argument, you can obviously do a list of years. However, if you want all years, well, that's simple. You're just going to pass through the all argument. They also give you an example of what the URL looks like. 
Keep in mind, if you do redirect to these URLs, it will not give you anything back because they have a placeholder for your API key, which comes after the user ID argument. So lots of good information here. So let's get the uh, data set one. Bum, bum, bum. So grab the data set list. From here, I'm gonna create a new variable called data set list. It's gonna be the BEA client. And this particular one is get data set list. Now I try to do my best to have examples and usage stuff. So um, if you look inside of it, it will have some examples in here for you to look like, I'm sorry, to look at and an overview of what it's gonna give you stuff back. And then from here, we will print out that data set list. So let's run this. Bam, look at that. Look at all that good stuff. So you can see there's some stuff here, data set description. Um, this isn't a super long one, but they are just telling you, you know, these are the data sets that you have access to if you would like to use them. So if you just need a high level overview about what you have access to, this would be a great uh, point to start at. So I'm gonna comment out this code just so it doesn't run again. And then we're gonna go on to our next endpoint. So there's also a special endpoint called grab parameters. And so this is really useful if you're trying to get a list of parameters to um, specify for a particular endpoint. So in this case, let's say I wanna get the parameter list for the regional data set. So I'm gonna create a new I'm mean, sorry, new variable called parameter set list. This will equal the BEA client. And then I'm gonna call the get parameters list uh, method. And in this one, it takes a single argument data set name. And in this case, it's very straightforward. It is simply called regional. I am then going to print out that particular list and uh, let's see what we get. Okay, perfect. So in this example, it gives you a list of all the parameters that you need to pass through or that are optional. So for example, there is a, uh, where's a good one? Parameter name. This is called geo FIPS. Um, and it specifies whether it is a required one or not. And so in this case, I think one is true, if I remember. I can't remember correctly. The documentation will say it. Um, and then it also gives you a description of that particular parameter if you need to know what the uh, description is. You just high level, you know, what is it for and how would you specify it? Um, and then they also specify a default value and then a data type as well. So this is just more for you if you're a little bit confused about what particular arguments you need to pass through then I would recommend that you go to this particular endpoint and see at least at a high level, what are your options and the descriptions of those particular arguments as well. So I'm gonna comment out this one. And then I think for this, I am gonna cut the video here cause we're getting a little bit too long. And in the next video, we're gonna keep going through the different endpoints. Uh, there's not too many, but there are a few that I would like to cover for you. So at this point, if you have any questions about getting yourself set up, please put those down in the comments below and I will try to get back to you. And then otherwise we will see you in part two.